There you go. Whoa. 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 <laughs> yep, I think I found why your back's hurting. It is very pronounced. Not right here on your right side. <laughs> like, oh boy. <laughs> no, I don't like that at all. <laughs> That's not accurate. <laughs> no, no, no. Things people say online. <laughs>Keep your chest relaxed, but just turn your head towards me. Okay, that's about it. It's about maybe mm -hmm. 20 degrees. Then turn your head right for me. Okay, a lot more that way. Yeah. But the but left side, way. we'll we'll check that out at the end. We'll see okay. if we can. So there's knuckles. There's there's joints, and they all work as a team in here, right? So you have to have all the vertebrae working as a team, and they all give a few degrees each, mm -hmm. right? So the neck is designed to work primarily from the top. Our, our skull sits on this round donut called the atlas, mm -hmm. and that atlas sits on a pin called the dens. There's a little pin here, mm -hmm. and that's the second vertebrae. It's called the axis, and so the skull sits on this donut, which sits on a pin. <laughs> and that's how your head turns. <laughs> okay. And the model shows pretty well how much motion comes from just this one joint. Yeah. 45 degrees each way. Mm -hmm. So essentially 45 should just come from your atlas. Now. Commonly, everybody wears out their lower neck, and we wear out the lower neck because this isn't working. Your main engine up here isn't mm -hmm. moving, and then you're trying to do everything with your lower neck, and then you actually recruit your upper back. Okay. So you'll, when I was trying to, you, you're, you're, there's a tendency with your neck won't turn, you'll, you'll involve oh, your chest, yeah. Yeah. right? <laughs> so you're using your chest mm -hmm. to help because your neck won't rotate right. independently. So it's just a, it's a frozen atlas. There's actually nothing that wears out up here. There's just joints. Mm -hmm. So, meaning like like your finger. It's like if you didn't if I didn't bend my finger and then I for many years or put it in a cast and then took it off, I wouldn't be able to bend my finger. Right. And it would been maybe even hurt to bend my finger. Right. But there's just joints up here that need to be I call it you know, cleaned or rinsed out. The surface is built up with like a plaque or a grit that needs oh, to be cleaned okay. off. By restoring the function to your upper neck, that takes stress off the lower neck. Mm -hmm. You have lower back pain? Yeah, especially, for... well, after riding, I do sometimes. It was worse probably when I first started back. It's getting a little bit better. Okay. Now where it's not hurting. But yeah, to where then the hip started hurting too. And then do you have numbness down the legs or you've had numbness or? Um, no, okay. no. I do have like the bottom of my feet kind of tingle in that. But I'm also type one diabetic. Diabetes might be the yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it might, and I okay. just found that out like in March. Okay. So. Oh, does it radiate or does it pretty much just stay in the back? It pretty much stay yeah, like right in there. Kind of. Okay, kind of, kind of right there. Yeah. Not, that's not so far at the bottom, but kind of middle, yeah, middle lower back there. Right. Okay. Right. And then, is there any symptoms in your neck? How's your just just a stiffness? Yeah, just a just stiffness. stiffness in the neck. Yeah. Okay. And then Nadia said too. She thinks my left side is down compared to my right. When I ride, she Correct. notices that. Yeah, you're in left avoidance, so that's why you can't turn your head left because your neck likes to be over here on the right side. Okay. Do you understand? So when we have an injury on one side of our head, our head will tilt away mm -hmm. from it, and then we'll drop the shoulder, shoulder. Okay. to balance our eyes. You can't walk around with your head tilted. It makes you dizzy. So your right. body will drop a shoulder to okay. make your eyes level with the horizon. We call it a riding reflex. Okay. So she's, she's seeing that when you're riding going, right. I see your shoulders are tilted, but it's really a head tilt. Okay. Creating a shoulder tilt. tilt. We're going to go very, very gentle. Take a deep breath in for me. I'm going to help you. And then let the air out for me. Let all the air out. Exhale. Easy, easy. Good. Deep breath in for me. On easy. Let the head relax, chest relax. Good, deep breath in, you're doing great. One Ooh. more. <laughs> you're doing great, I'm putting this up for you a little bit. Yeah, put the head right on there for me. Relax your chest, exhale, you're doing great, I got you. Good, okay, stay there for me, good. Yeah, got a little motion in there, get some more. Have you heard the word atlas before? No. No, mm -hmm. uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you've been to chiropractors and they've um, been using the activator, which is a little clicker device. You said that you right. had that done, and then they did a technique called flexion distraction on you, where they had your legs tied to the table and they were kind of opening up your lower back. Right. How did you feel with that? Didn't, didn't feel much difference, or felt no, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I I don't 
think it's a good idea to further bend people forward. You know, our bodies tend to want to round forward to get the stress on the non-sensitive areas, but the treatment shouldn't be in that same vein <laughs> of continuing to bend you forward. Our goal with this treatment is to bring you as upright as you can, and I think you mentioned, you know, sometimes you lay on the floor right, and, it, right. and just being flat on your back, you notice that you makes, when you, it, makes it better, better, makes it feel better, which is, to me, you're making your body become more upright and that's where you need to be and so just it's about unlocking the upper back unlocking your upper neck we start with that hug adjustment because that I'm examining and treating at the same time we need to have your thoracic cage mobile it not being mobile is understandable and is the reason for why you're here <laughs> and why we need care I think of range of motion like a currency and so we can lose it um, or you can trade it in and get rid of pain, you know. You can, right. And so people give up their range of motion and they also give up pain or they exchange it for feeling better. We want to restore your range of motion and still feel good. Yeah, just a lot of tension here. These are the That's roots. That's what everybody says. Yeah, it's postural. I say that. It's postural. It's okay. This, these are the roots of your neck, right? So the, the, uh, the, the same muscles that attach up here at the top part of your neck have roots here in your shoulders. And because the head is forward, the roots in your lower neck are being pulled on and it's raising these ribs up. And so ultimately just massaging it won't change anything. It won't ultimately change anything. The goal is with my massage and with the adjustments to make your spine limber so mm -hmm. that we can start the process of what we call mirror image stretching, which is uh, bringing you to the opposite position. So you were asking for neutral earlier. You said laying flat right. is just neutral. Okay. I'm going to go even farther and ask, ask for you to actually arch backwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? It's like a tree being bent forward. Just, yeah. just standing it up straight is, a, is better than staying forward, forward, but I'm going to actually bend it the other, other way. <laughs> right? Which you better be confident that we got the whole spine working so that we don't do all the bending where you're injured, if that makes sense. We don't want to just bend exclusively where you've been bending. We want your spine to bend evenly throughout all 24 vertebrae. We want your whole right. spine to be working as a team. And so that's the whole point of the visit on the table is unlocking. And it's pretty boring. <laughs> it's yeah, me going yeah. in here and just unlocking and, and trying to soften you again. And, and we'll talk about something called enzymes. There are proteolytic enzymes that I recommend people that are you know, into your 30s and 40s. It's important that uh, we take some enzymes with okay. care to restore that lubrication and suppleness when there's arthritis, arth meaning joint, itis meaning inflammation, so when the joints are inflamed in your lower neck, the bones will grow, they'll hit nerves, and your body will compensate by rounding forward and, and putting your oh, head forward, okay. which then creates the muscle tension, right? Mm -hmm. So to ultimately fix the muscle tension, we have to address the injury in the lower neck that creates the ch postural change. And that's, we address that by mechanically taking the stress off the lower neck so that the lower neck no longer feels the need to be avoided. That you don't right. feel that, you won't have that postural inclination to round forward because the lower neck isn't under so much stress and we incrementally bring you back upright. I use the massage to expedite and speed up this process of softening you. Oh, <laughs> if I just, okay. If I just used adjustments, it would just take forever mm -hmm. <laughs> or a lot longer. Right. I find if we do a combination of, of massage Gua Sha, which is a combing I'll show you in a minute, and then um, adjustments and stretching. We can, we can um, fairly quickly change where your body wants to be. I think of it like a, if I bought a car in 1970, like a, let's say I bought a Camaro in 1970 and I parked it in a garage and never drove it, right? And then mm -hmm. 54 years later, I take the key and try to put it in the ignition and start up the car nothing would happen. Yeah, right, right, right. The right. battery's dead, the oil's probably all congealed, but it's got no miles on it. Uh -huh. right? the, the odometer says zero miles. Right, right. Right, but just because something says zero miles doesn't mean it's healthy, mm -hmm. right? And, they, and that's what sort of the pictures show us. They show us the mileage. They give us an odometer readout of the spine, and everybody looks at the odometer readout of the middle back and says, well, it's unremarkable. It's, it's, it's zero miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't actually function because actually the area moving is what keeps it healthy. It's what keeps, run, running an engine is actually what keeps it lubricated. The oil pump, the water pump, um, 
the body is kept healthy through mobility. And so the area being frozen and locked down makes it fall apart in some sense, even though it's not actually doing anything. And it's right. Kind of, you know, it's, 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 it, it wasn't healthy that it wasn't functioning. Ever going too hard? Please let me know. Okay, I'm a pretty okay. greedy chiropractor, but I don't need to. <laughs> uh, I don't need to overwhelm you if I'm going too hard. Just say, hey, I'd just take it a little easier. All right, my goal is to go to the edge and back off, so to to push you without overwhelming you. Okay. Right. I, I don't need to overwhelm you, but I do. If we don't push you a little bit, we're not gonna. Nothing's Nothing gonna change. Nothing will happen. Nothing yeah. will happen, and so we we want to try to ride that wave of your tolerance of what you can handle. And and today I'm. It's kind of a getting to know you and getting to figure out where that edge is. A little bit, there we go, okay. Uh huh. Everything's been sort of compressed in here. We're just trying to open it up. So I, I know I told you earlier that your neck has supposed to have a curve in it. Right. And it's not supposed to be straight, but I do use traction a little bit to unlock the vertebrae. If they're okay. all compressed together, they won't rotate. So mm -hmm. I do a little bit of traction, not for the sake of stretching you, but just for the sake of unlocking the segments a little bit so they'll actually move and rotate. Okay, all right. Very, very gentle. A little baby adjustment. It's okay. A little baby adjustments here. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's okay. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Relax right here. There you go. Yay! No. <laughs> I heard that. That was your yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get more. I'm going to get as much as I can out of you. You did great. I don't think anybody ever worked on my neck. Okay, well, sometimes chiropractors will just go, okay, we got to we got to only use clickers on her because she's a delicate wallflower. No. <laughs> it's like, she's tough, man. She's, yeah. She's riding horses. She's, you know, the amount of forces that you're putting on your spine riding a horse is, you know, the, the compression, the movement, you know, it's, 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 and that's actually how your bones are kept healthy. So the, you know, they'll get into osteoporosis, and I go, well, you right, got to have Right, and my bone density is good, so. Right, well, but that's movement. you got to keep moving. That's what, mm -hmm. it's stress that keeps your bone density healthy, and so. What's the biggest reason why people stop moving? Well, I'm in back pain. I am right. And then the nerves that leave your spine are what keep your bones healthy. And so when the nerves get pinched, the bones will atrophy, similar to how muscle atrophies, right? So if the, if the nerve is not healthy, then the muscle and bone won't be healthy either. So it's again, it's all about your spinal health. Uh, the nerves flowing from your spinal column to your body need to be able to do that without having interference. All right, all right. There we go. Loosen up a little bit. There you go. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. You did good. Yeah. You okay? Didn't hurt, right? Right. Feel a little, maybe yeah. a little, a little startling, but you know, they're not they're not injured. They they can handle being woken up a little bit, and they and then by waking this upper neck up, the lower neck will. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the backup has no. arrived. Yeah. Right. I'm not the only one working in this factory. <laughs> I'm not the only one doing all the work around here. An area where there's congestion, the mark will kind of come out because it, it brings blood into an area that's been frozen and sometimes anything that's been trapped in those areas that have been frozen, you're gonna kind of release and wash out. Mm -hmm. Right up here at the top is a mark that's starting to form. Right above where most people are injured, right in the lower neck where all the skin folds the most is also where oh. the vertebrae fold the most and so we're trying to create a new fold up here get your upper neck working there you go yeah right right there you might notice it will be a little tender right there the mark usually also comes out where inside you feel soreness right so mm -hmm. sometimes the patient will tell me ed there's something trapped <laughs> and, oh. I can, and i can feel it something's stuck in there can you work it out of it you know, work that out of there for me Working these ribs down. We gotta loosen up your upper back here. There we go. And we'll get that lower section in a second. So your your parents, I take it, did not ride horses. Um, no, my dad, the way I got into it, my dad always wanted to, 
And um, then I had an older sister who was always causing them problems. She was like 10 years older. Mm -hmm. And so they got her a horse thinking, okay, maybe that'll keep her out of trouble. Okay. So you kept riding. She, mm -hmm. she ended. In she didn't want it, yeah. That's always fascinating in life, you know, the things that you're... Right. That you're, that you're given, you don't really want. Mm -hmm. The things that you want, you don't have, that you work for, then right. you maybe, you know. There's also something to be said about the emotion of wanting is so much stronger than the emotion of having. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough one. It's like, once you get it, you're like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Like, she didn't really, she could care less about working in the barn or anything like that. Interesting. So you have you've had no deep tissue work in here before ever, or been a long time, or I don't think so. I mean, I do go to that hand and stone place and for massages, but they, they kind of do between a Swedish and a therapeutic. So it's not this deep. No. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad you had some care. You know, many people mm -hmm. come in here and they've never had anybody touch them, so it's glad that you had some uh, mechanical work. But um, to to do what I'm proposing we have to go pretty deep we almost divide we, we, we do divide the, the back into three layers a superficial a middle and a deep and you know if we're doing light massage we're really just cleaning out the maybe the superficial maybe a little bit of the middle layer right. some that sense but to to get down to the joint and the like that we call it multifidus there's deep levels of muscles in there we really are trying to clean out so that we can restore the suppleness to get the joint moving again there, there's these are the knuckles in here that I'm trying people think I'm doing a muscle massage, and of course oh. the muscles are being worked on, but it's really the knuckles, the, the spinal joints underneath that we're trying to clean and unlock. Many jobs don't require chest mobility. Right. You know, and so it's easy for us to lose our range of motion in our chest. It's like it slowly happens, and then, you know, I, I think I read on your paperwork, you know, just gradual. You know, it's just gradually yeah. gotten worse that over time, is, yeah. and that's, that's a drift of posture. Mm -hmm. It's a postural drift, and you know you can't put any you know your finger on any one moment that did it. So, yeah. yeah. You're tough, though. I got you. You know, 26 is full skeletal maturity. So every decade after 26, you get the idea, right? Yeah. It becomes harder and harder to change where the cement is, to change. Right. Now, that's not to say we can't give you a lot of relief just by getting some mobility back. You understand? Mm -hmm. So staying staying in the same posture, and, but having your, your chest mobile is going to take stress off those areas. Right. Just me today going in here and cleaning out your back will get some relief. Now... The posture change keeps the mobility, so you mm -hmm. won't need so much treatment, right? So, and, it, and having your posture in the right position keeps the lactic acid from rebuilding back up again, right? Oh, okay. But just going in and help and, and getting her, um, her spine clean is going to bring relief, but ultimately changing posture, you're right, it's difficult because the longer, the longer a habit has been formed, <laughs> the harder right. it is to break it. And so these are long-standing habits that have been fed, and you know I, we don't we don't know. Yeah, we don't. An image would also help me answer a better idea. The answer question. My wife asked the question of prognosis. You know, how long is this mm -hmm. going to take? And imaging helps to give <clears throat> insight to a clearer answer of that question. Right? If the lower neck is really really worn out, then maybe I can't expect you to be upright. Right, okay. right. So based on how healthy the cartilage, um, how or how how uh, worn out the cartilage is, you know, your body might need to have that head forward so we don't pinch the nerves. You would have pain down your arm if it wasn't for your head going forward. Okay. Right now, how are we going to get your head back upright? Well, yeah. because we're not going to make the lower neck do it. We're going to make other areas bring you upright. Okay. So we're not going to change hopefully the size of the hole in the lower neck. 
we're going to make the upper back uh, get looser and then make the upper back bend and change to bring her upright, not by making the area that's injured do it. The difficulty with that is the area that's injured is very loose. <laughs> and so it's the most eager member of your team that wants to answer all the questions, like the student in the front row, that's right. the teacher's <laughs> pet, that wants to, I know, I know, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going, okay, I know you know the answer, but I want to give the opportunity the other vertebrae <laughs> yeah. to answer the question. And so, you know, you know, Ed, I feel like my lower neck was, was hurting when I was doing that stretch. And it's like, yeah, your lower neck is is going to be apt to doing a lot of the motion when I, even though I don't want it to. I'll take a picture of your back in a minute, but there's pretty good extensive amount of marks just in the areas that I've worked on here. These marks are the evidence of the lactic acid buildup because of the posture. So kind of like having muddy shoes, let's say poor, oh, okay. poor shoes poor. that you didn't take off at the front door, yeah. right? And you walk throughout your house with them and then I'm coming in just sweeping, but if we don't take off the muddy shoes, then it just gets dirty again. Yeah. So there's two folds of, there's two parts of the care. One, take off the shoes at the front door, and two, sweep up the mess. You know, and so many people just end up just cleaning up the mess, but not getting to the root cause, which is take your shoes off the front door, so you stop tracking right. in all the mud. And so that's that's what posture change it. Posture change does that. It changes the buildup changes the reason for why it's happening in the first place. You're doing great. And then as much, this tightness up here is making this hurt. Oh, and so okay. I know it's, it's kind of like, Ed, I told you when I was sitting, I told you it's down here. Why aren't yeah. you rubbing? And I'm, I'm going to get down there in a second. But the, the tightness up here is a large contributor to why this is hurting. You know, I'm definitely very spoiled. I've had a chiropractor my whole life. Yeah. My, my dad and oh, really? of course my sister and my brother are chiropractors. And so we've had care. You know, when we fell off a bicycle, we got adjusted. Right. You know, when we had a fall off a trampoline, we got adjusted. And so we weren't allowed to heal stiff. Right. Or heal crooked. And a majority of the population, you know, it's like, okay, kid, walk it off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and we heal however we see fit or wherever we can find a comfortable place to be and, and that's really what your posture becomes it just becomes you know this is where I found some comfort this is where I found the least amount of pain was being in this position and with that though we have pressure on the nerves uh, like I said earlier the nerves are held tight when the body's rounded forward so the nerves that go to your pancreas the nerves that go to your heart the nerves that go to your stomach you know they don't they're not able to transmit signals as well and so it's kind of a side effect of having, of, of avoiding back problems is that the organs now get affected. And so it leads me to the final thing, which is that your spinal health is your health. And that having a healthy spine, having the channels along the spine not uh, be filled with lactic acid or the nerves being tethered allows the brain to communicate to your body effectively. The organs themselves have no self-intelligence. They listen to the brain for instruction. They read the teleprompter that the brain writes. And if the signals aren't getting received, then the organ dysfunctions. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. All right, going a little deeper here. Here we go. Feel that right there? Yeah, a little spot. Okay, right there. The 
This is supposed to be smooth the whole way up and down the spine. There shouldn't be areas of tightness that are remaining tight when you're laying down, right? So there's no gravity on your spine right now, and it's right. still tight. Now you can have tightness from bad posture, and you can have tightness from protection, you know, post-injury. And that's what this is. This is injury, and the body's in a guarded mode here. It's saying, no, 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 we're going to lock that down. It's not really a knot. Okay, yeah, it's not a knot like like I, like I took two cords and tied them into a... Uh, <laughs> the muscle's yeah. not, a, but it's, it's, it's in a spasm. It's in a... You know, maybe a person likes... If you like the word trigger point, then fine, but there's tightness here that's lingering, and that's causing a blockage. It's called a knot because it feels like a knot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, gee whiz, people. It's raised up and it's a bump. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh boy. <laughs> no, I don't like that at all. <laughs> That's not accurate. No, no, no. Things people say online. Keyboard warriors. <laughs> That's petechia. That's ecchymosis. Then why didn't it come out everywhere? Why did the marks come out in specifically in small areas? Because where there's tension, the mark will come out the most. Where there's the most lactic acid in size, where you're going to get the most buildup. You can't, I can't create a mark everywhere. And then actually, as your care progresses, I won't be able to make a mark anywhere. So why on visit five when I comb you, nothing happens? Why can't I continue making ecchymosis or bruising? Because it's not that. It's something inside lactic acid, you know, pain. And then you'll actually tell me where the mark will come out. You can directly feel what we're releasing as I'm working on you go, Ed, there's something right there, please get it. Mm -hmm. And maybe not at the beginning, it's everywhere. And so it's kind of like, well, I feel it everywhere. But as your care progresses, the marks will only come out where the most buildup is, 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 is built up in the first place. Okay. okay. You know, I'm going real gentle. I mean, it's not, it's most pretty light with the gua sha tool. And, you know, right over where she was hurting, there's all this lactic acid, and it's not a coincidence that this is in here. You know, I make it, I think it directly similar to plaque on your teeth at a dental hygienist. You know, it's something right. that builds up it's over time, tough. and we weren't guided on, you know, how to get rid of it or how to care for our spine. And so it just builds up and builds up. And I think that's the epicenter right there where she was hurting earlier. There, it's in the tightest part of her back right here. I'm real gentle and real. Epsom salt bath is in your future. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> Get a couple cups of salt, Epsom salt, put it in the bathtub if you can. Mm -hmm. Minimal water for 10 minutes or so if you can, not be too uncomfortable. Then fill the tub up and soak for, you want to get it as concentrated as possible. Is the oh, point. okay. So as much salt concentration. Try to lay your back in the water for as much as you can handle. Um, and then that'll, that'll help. Essentially, you're going to sweat out the inflammation. You'll sweat out this lactic acid right through your skin. Oh, okay. Yep, I think I found why your back's hurting. Yeah. I think I uh -uh. found the reasons. Can you feel that this right side is more elevated? Can you can you 
perceive that? Hard? No. Not really? Okay. Uh -uh. I mean, okay. As we care for you more, you might, you know, when I work on your back, the left side is about a quarter inch lower right here. Oh, really? And this is all elevated. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay, real elevated right here. I mean, feel that. That right there. Can you feel the difference? Yeah. You know, much lower right, right I here. I can feel, yeah. And then you got a big, it is very pronounced knot right here on your right side. And that has to be worked out of there. That, that can't be, I would say it's an injury, you know, maybe a postural habit and then <clears throat> when you had a certain alignment and then, then you were injured, it further injured this area. But this hmm. this needs to be untangled right here or released. Where I find to be the worst area sometimes isn't where you're hurting the most, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because the area that's stiffest doesn't transmit much signal. It's the part that actually function that is, is where it hurts. But this is objectively the tightest part of your area of your lower back here is right here. Hmm. Right. Yeah, I can feel that. <laughs> That's the biggest blockage. And so we just, I learned more about you on the second visit. We'll see how your body responds to today, and we oh, uh, okay. take it from there and sort of have a like data points on a graph. Every visit is a data point, and I can kind of start plotting a line and a trajectory. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. that's, that, that's that knot I was trying to. Yeah. I'm showing down there at the bottom, I'll zoom in a little bit, but that wow. it's all that lactic acid. That's on, on the side. left. It's on yeah. your right. Or that's it's on my right. Your right okay. side there on the lower. Okay. This side is lower, but this side is now you probably like I said this might hurt more because it actually works, but that's the most blocked up part. Yeah. It's where it's most jammed. Wow. And we gotta move the stress off that. Okay. Okay. It's a joint down here called the sacroiliac joint and you know, when we sit for long periods of time this joint will quit on us and so we wanna keep this area as limber as possible. And right here's the top of the joint. I know you're used to... <laughs> Wait a second! <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I can fall asleep. <laughs> okay, you're all done. Is that it? Yeah. Really? You know, it, it definitely helps people to some degree, but it's it, the amount of benefit that we found that we can, by doing the work that we do, is so much greater. It's just milder. It's just milder. It's really yeah. the way I look at it. It's fine. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be so mean, but it's just, it's just milder. You know, if you absolutely said, Ed, I can't handle that. Stop. Then we'll do the activator, you know, and and, and then maybe it's a tool to help us get to be able to do what I want to do. There we go. There we go. Okay. I got your toes. I got you. Everybody walks out. There we go. Uh -huh. Look towards me again. Look towards me. No. Okay. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> I'm just going to look at the mid-range. Now turn your head right. Turn your head right. Uh-huh. Good. Now turn back left for me. Yeah, much better. Yeah. Yeah, Another it feels 15, better. 15, 20 degrees. Yeah. Beautiful. It feels better going that way. Little, just check your ear here for a second. Real gentle. Real baby at an adjustment here. Are right, you going to tilt your head to the right for me? Tilt right for me? Oh. So, yep, there you go. Uh-huh. Good. Real gentle, tilt your head to the right for me. Good, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a good sport. Yeah. Put it with my ear adjustments. <laughs> Go ahead and tilt your head left for me a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. Tilt left for me. Okay. okay. What does that do? I find it helps yeah. to open up the drain lines for the ear. So oh, sometimes sinus, sinus right. drainage and yeah. nose drainage. A lot of it, I believe, would, is, is from your neck. But oh, a piece okay. of it can be that these drain lines come from our nose down our neck and tension here will cause 
then it to back up into our face and so okay. nasal drip or ear issues. I have like, yeah, awful sinuses. There you go. So we want to restore the arch in your neck. Mm -hmm. um, in order to do that, we have to spend time stretching the rubber bands that, that wrap your spine. The rubber bands in the front typically are never stretched because of the predominance of being forward. And so essentially the rubber bands on the back side <clears throat> have been stretched all the time. That makes sense? Okay. And the rubber bands on the front have never been stretched. And so essentially if we just adjust and massage you, when you stand up, that tight ligament on the front will just pull you back forward and we don't oh, change anything, right, right? Right, So the focus is, that took, this took 100 years, <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> to figure this out. It took 100 years to realize that we can't just adjust people to change posture. We have to adjust people to make them limber and then we want to follow up as soon as we can with some stretching in a bending back fashion. We call okay. this mirror image or extension stretching, mm -hmm. not traction, which is inversion, where we're just pulling people straight. We're actually right. <clears throat> arching you back, and then this is, the, this is the first step. So there's one for the back, which we not gonna do today, but <laughs> I wanted okay. to see, or you, maybe even, we could take a rolled up towel maybe, take a, like a, a beach towel, mm -hmm. roll it up into a cylinder, and we place that right over the bra strap, middle back area would be the way we would do that oh, initially. Okay. We're doing two things. We're trying to change where the bending point is so you're not all the bending's happening where you're hurting. Mm -hmm. And we make it bend more where you're tight in the upper back, middle back, and we actually start to arch back. Now I have a book behind your head and the idea would be to take this out eventually. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm i jumping the gun here a little bit. I want. I was saying earlier, I want to give you, this is a preview, but yeah. I really want to spend a couple more hours getting you limber, okay. getting the enzymes in you. And But I wanted to show you also just this is, the care isn't just the table, the care is Right. You doing homework at home. 